great, guys. So I'd like to welcome everybody to the inaugural Level Up call. This is a team collaboration uh, with Coastal, myself and our team, which is Empowerment. And we've got Double Black Diamond, Josh Rose's team. We have Mountain East with Zach, the crazy mustache Luffles, and uh, Puerto Rico with Rose. So guys, we wanted to come together because there's power in numbers and coming on here all together, you get to hear different perspectives. Everybody does things just a little bit different. Um, We're going to have guest speakers, but we wanted to pull all together so that we could better help everybody learn and grow, ourselves included. So um, Today is really just about introducing our call. And Zach, do you want to say something about us all coming together? I think it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I, think, I think that uh, that it's been a lot just to um, to bear the brunt of the whole thing by yourself and come up with new ideas. So our idea was is we all uh, you know put put four of the top managers together, and um, you know I mean like we've got great content individually but you know what like hearing the same person's voice every single week gets repetitive um i can say something to somebody 500 times and then you know josh can say something a different word in a different way and all of a sudden it clicks you know it used to happen to that 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 kind of stuff used to happen to me all the time whenever i used to talk to whitmore and athena and and um some of the other people whenever i was newer in the business and i was constantly talking to them it's like one of them would say something to me and then I wouldn't get it. And then the other one would say it and it, and it would sink in, you know? So it's always good to get as many perspectives and different eyes looking at your situation and not just re- being relying on one person. So um, we thought, you know, that, that we could get everybody on here and that we could, um, we could really make this thing work. You know, we could we could join forces and um, and we could always come up with good content between four of us. So. Very well said. And how about you, Josh? Do you want to say something? No, like he said, yeah, I'm excited um, just to get everyone together. And, you know, obviously more more of us together is better than just one of us alone on an island. <clears throat> and um, I'm excited excited for the structure of it too um just you know obviously being out west now it's uh I'm definitely been felt a little bit more like an island so it'll be cool uh, like I'm on an island it'll be cool to you know gather with everybody weekly and have a little powwow and you know do some training and you know interview top people and you know be able to just plug in um and then be able to just give uh give back to everybody else you know because these calls um I remember just, you know, being in the beginning, you know, a weekly call every night at Thursday night at nine through Southeast was, you know, plugged into my schedule every week and it helped me tremendously as a newer agent. And um, I think this will just help a lot of our newer people uh, grow and, you know, plug in more and just be able to, you know, share and give back. So I'm excited about it. Definitely. Especially with the structure and everything. And then just being able to gather with everybody and uh, do a little powwow weekly. And I'm a little foggy right now. I'm, I definitely am sick. So that's all I'm going to say for now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How about you, Rose? I think that is a really important and powerful uh, for everybody to understand that we, like Zach Lafos and Josh Rose, myself, Paige, we don't come from any uh, sales background. I know that. I know there's construction. I know myself um, come from the medical field. And so just like you guys, we are going through the same struggles. So when it comes to, when it pertains to myself and the trainings that I will bring, I will always put myself in the same position as everybody else, because we're all going through the same motions. Uh, The only difference between you guys and us is that we've been doing that just a little bit longer and, um, you know, we are plugged into the trainings. The one thing that I find particularly important is for that, um, everybody to just really put this as a priority to get plugged into these trainings. If you don't listen to the next level live, if you don't listen to the advanced market sales, if you don't listen to 
any other thing, at least get yourself on a schedule um, so that you are somewhat plugged in. I have not seen anybody that has been successful by trying to do this on their own. It doesn't matter how much in, how much insurance, sales, or whatever experience that they have when it comes to the family first life system and when it comes to the way that the numbers work and the resources that we have available like leads and trainings and all the uplines and everybody able to help the only person that i find successful is the person that gets plugged into trainings so early on i was lucky enough to have josh rose across the hall from me i had a Athena Villanueva I had agents that I could literally talk as a um, administrative assistant when I first started at Family First Life. And I was able to see the good, the bad, and the ugly side of the industry to where what you're going to hear from me is literally this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen if you don't do it. This is what's going to happen if you do it. And I'm very good with numbers and I'm very in touch with. Uh, the results that you can get if you just follow the system and if you do this consistently, you know, if you will have success, but training is imminent, like you cannot skip that part. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, so um, today we don't really have a full topic as much as just wanting to come together as one large group, all of us together and let you know about the changes that we're making. But we do have time. So we also wanted to open this up for any type of question and answer. It um, doesn't matter what stage of this business you're in. If you have questions, please unmute yourself and, and ask away. And if it's directed for someone in particular, you can let us know that too. Anybody have any questions? Hi, I have a question. Just a little bit about, I guess, some of the struggles uh, when it comes to Rose, uh, yourself, Paige, Zach, and Josh, some of the struggles you guys kind of encountered early on when you're just trying to get going, you know, trying to, get, trying to get something going and just trying to get moving. You can just talk a little bit about that, please. Rose, you want to go first? I'm um, sure. So when, when I first started, like I said, I was starting as an admin for Athena's office. Um, it was very, very easy uh, to determine that the success had everything to do with consistency and numbers. I could hear Josh Rose going in at, you know, eight in the morning and not stopping until he got his appointments ready. He also had enough leads for him to fulfill his appointment needs. And, you know, he has stayed consistent since I've met him. So uh, the one thing that I found a struggle, as a struggle, right, was to stay consistent. Number one, to find the, 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 the one thing that I hear the agents ask me in the beginning is like, how many leads should I buy? What type of leads should I buy? And um, it's really a hard question to answer because, uh, the type of leads that you should buy is the type of leads that you find yourself comfortable investing in, right? So if you are not a person that has too much money to invest in the beginning um, or non, no money at all, which I have seen uh, some agents that don't have any money, you know, that just is a particular situation for you. So I would always suggest for you to start on your CRM leads, start building up from there then start getting into like the mailers, but it just really depends on the person. Um, but the one thing that I found very, very hard for me was to stay consistent still to this day, um, trying to get the amount of appointments, trying to get the activity. If you don't have enough appointments during the day, do you have a batch of leads that you can go door knock? If you have a batch of leads that you're uh, able to door knock, are you getting the no to your space? What is a re, uh, a resolved lead in your in your book. There's people that is like, no, that that it was a bad number. Did you go door knock that person? Did you try reaching them through any other means? Did you find them through like fast people search or something like that? So um, definitely staying consistent has everything to do. There's only one competition that you have, and it's yourself. Uh, you got to make sure you follow up with your clients. Don't compare yourself with anybody, and um, yeah, and just ask a lot of questions when it comes to the beginnings of your uh, journey. We're always there to to give you a, a helping hand, and I will always be like really, really, really honest. So if you call me, I will tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
Excellent. How about you, Josh or Zach? Yeah, struggles were um, not really taken seriously. And, you know, obviously we came from a different deal, um, but trying to make it work on being a part-time agent when you're supposed to be full-time. And, you know, in the beginning, it was just, you know, running 12 to 15 appointments a week. And it's like, what are you doing with the other 80 hours you have left in the week? Um, but um, it just not having that consistency, like we, um, like Rose said, so it was hard to ever get momentum going when you're only, you know, running an extremely part-time schedule. <laughs> um, but as soon as you, you know, take it seriously and put your mind to it and say, you know, I'm, I'm going to you know, do what the other top people are doing, which is running, you know, 30 appointments a week, you know, everything changes and you develop that momentum and you get it going. So it's just, you know, um, going in with the attitude, like on dial days that, you know, you're going to dial till you have those 15 appointments for those two days and then 15 appointments for the next couple of days. So it's just um, like, you know, consistency and momentum are everything in this business. Obviously you want to have a good lead flow, um, but really, you know, taking your schedule seriously and treating it like a business. It's like, you know, you want to, you want to have the people to see to help. And, you know, um, with that, you know, just, it's just more, more at bats, you know, more home runs and, you know, more families being helped. So um, just get that momentum up to where you're getting 25 to 30 appointments a week and everything will just click. Um, in the beginning, it was the biggest roller coaster ever. Cause you'd have, you know, some sales, then no sales, sales and no sales. So it's really, focusing on you know your attitude and activity and just putting in the work and seeing the families so that was my biggest struggle was the work part in the beginning but we also came from a different deal where they told us to run 15 appointments <laughs> not a good model but yeah definitely not leads right. phones activity yep it yeah. seems pretty simple but it's the magic how about you zach mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing for me was holding myself accountable. Um, whenever you come from the W-2 world into a 1099 world, I mean, it's like your head's always spinning, right? Because like I was so used to, especially in the, in the construction business, you've always got somebody screaming at you, go faster, go harder, go faster, go faster, go faster. We need this. You need to be here. You know, there's a lot of, I mean, it's not like a lot of structure, but you had places where you had to be, you had things that you had to do in that day and because you had your boss you know breathing down your neck to get things done whenever you come to this it's all you so like the biggest struggle that i had was was trying to convert that that blue collar mentality over to this you know because i knew that i could work hard because i had been working hard my whole life you know what i mean i worked my way through college i paid for all my own stuff i've always had a job since i was 12 so i knew i had the work ethic but how do I transfer that into this business? Because this business is not like, like Sean always says, it's not like going out and digging holes. This business is a lot of mental stuff, right? And I had never worked on myself, you know, because I come from middle class. I am our clients. I've worked with my hands 40 hours a week and been underpaid and underappreciated, you know? So like, I know how to communicate with my clients, but I didn't know, how to to put put everything into motion you know and i think that the big jump for me was is whenever i finally made that decision to lock down counties three states away you know whenever i went on the road so whenever we got first got into this thing just so all of you guys know how pampered you are all right i started on $60 leads, six and a half hours away from my house. Every week I bought $60 leads. Every single house I went into, it cost me 60 bucks. And I was driving six and a half hours every week to go to work. You know, and then I hear you guys, some of y'all bitch and complain about going 45 minutes up the road. You know, like I, it, that's what changed my business because I had to make a commitment. Right. Like I had to believe in myself. I had to make a commitment because those lead man, those leads are on automatic. They're coming in, whether I got the money or not, they're coming in. So whenever you start betting on yourself, you, you take that leap of faith and you jump in both feet. Then this thing really starts to take off for you really becomes real. Then you've got to learn how to manage your money, 
how to manage your time, how to do all these things on your own, you know, and that was, that was one of the biggest, you know, obstacles that I had to come over and the time thing, hell, I'm seven years into it and I'm still working. You know, like, I mean, the, the thing that you're going to find out about this business, especially if you're new, it will humble you over and over and over again. When you think you have arrived, guess what? You know, like, like whenever we think that it's us and it's not the, the system that's been put before us, whenever we go, oh, man, I'm awesome at selling insurance. Boom, you're going to get 12 chargebacks with three companies. And nobody's going to show up for the next two weeks just to humble you, just to let you know that you're not in charge. You know, the system's in charge. We've put forth a system for you guys that works. If you follow the system and not try to reinvent the wheel or not try to do it your way, because look, if we were, if, if you were doing it your way, you wouldn't be here, right? Trust us. We've made all the mistakes for you guys. Hell, I've made every mistake you can make in this business at least five times just to make sure that I did it right. Okay, so like, like learn off of the mistakes that we've made. That's why we're here pouring into you guys because we truly want to see everybody win. That's all I got. Very good point. It's kind of like we've already been through the um, landmines. Don't... Don't step where we got blown up. <laughs> Let us yeah. help you avoid them. Absolutely. So for, for myself, um, Marlon, that was a good question. I, I think I struggled with everything that everybody mentioned. Um, you know, I was part-time. And when I went full-time, the consistency and sticking to a schedule was huge. Um, but I would say probably my biggest thing has been my self-belief and, you know, believe belief in myself, belief that I can do it and keeping my mind right because this business, as Zach says, it, it'll humble you and you hear a lot of trainings on the roller coaster. The roller coaster is real. You <laughs> will be on it before you even know you're on it. You're down in one of the lows and you're like, when did I even get on this ride? I didn't mean to. I mean, mindset is so important. So for me, I, um, what I do to keep my mind right is critical. And it took a long time because this is something that Athena talked to me about a lot. And there's, if anybody on here has ever talked to Athena and she didn't talk to you about your mindset, please raise your hand. Not one hand is going to go up. Mindset is so important. And, you know, I did affirmations for like a couple weeks and I was like, yeah, nothing's changing. This, this don't work. So, you know, I, I was a hard head. I, I definitely did it the hard way in terms of learning that, you know, those affirmations are something you do over and over and over till they pop into your brain automatically without you even thinking about it. That's when you know they're finally working, but you got to do it every day until then. But the mindset was probably my biggest, biggest struggle and having the faith and belief in myself. And that got a lot easier. I was at the other deal very briefly, but the faith and belief in myself got easier once I got here because of our leadership, you know, all the way from Sean, Mike down, um, our training, everything. So our process, it, it does work. So hopefully that helps. Anybody else have any questions before we wrap up today? Yeah, I was just asking um, since in regards to his folders and folders and folders of leads. Um, I'm about to start doing this, uh, hit the ground running, hopefully on Monday. Um, so hi, everybody. I'm Michael. I'm down here in Florida. That's why I'm in a tank top. It's way too hot. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, like when when do you give up? Like when do they go on the 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 forget it folder? Like do you like how often do you check back with the people like? You know, I, I'm in currently I'm in I'm in in-home sales for windows and doors for Renewal by Anderson. And, you know, like I have a like a check back with list and I reach out to people via email, text, phone. And I, I got like a five times I try to reach out like to check back to see if they're still interested before I stop calling them. And like, I'm curious, you know, like what. Can I speak to this one for a moment, please? Absolutely. Okay, 
So <clears throat> I know there's going to be a lot of other um, good stuff out there, but to me, I think it was Zach that always told me, until they tell you no to the whites of your eyes, you, you door knock them. Even if, yeah. like I had a lady that hung up on me. I'm not interested. Hung up on me. I door knocked her. I wrote a $100,000 annuity. She never knew she hung up on me. She still doesn't know she hung up on me. But I wasn't able to help her out with insurance. But once I saw her face to face and saw the whites of her eyes and just started a conversation, we ended up writing a hundred thousand dollar annuity. Mm -hmm. That's so. So here, here's what I tell people. You ready? Super simple. They're so elite. They tell you to f off to your face, or they're dead, or they're dead. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so too. if they die, guess what? You resolve that lead. If they tell you to f off to your face, then you resolve that lead. Then you don't need to call them no more. Okay. Until then, I'm going to continue to call them. I've sent I've sent leads that are six, seven months old that I've called 500 times. Today, they just decided to pick up. Does it um Does it help? I have a I have a out of state telephone number. Like, does it Does that matter? I know a lot of people or area codes if they don't know the. I mean, I you I used to I used to play that game where I would get. Now, like if I'm calling Philly and I've got a, uh, you know, like where's your, where you're in Florida, where's your, where is your, uh, it, Pittsburgh's my area code. Okay. I mean, if you're that far out, then yeah, I would, I would get a, a Florida number. You know what I mean? You can do and like line apps. two or, yeah, yeah there's like, a bunch of apps. But I mean, like if it's like North Carolina, South Carolina, I call using my number. But Josh yeah. Rose is always called South Carolina with a New York number. So, I mean, and he's, written 50 grand a month consistently for the last forever. So, I mean, everything in this business works all, all the time, some of the time, you know what I mean? Like that, mm -hmm. that it is what it is. Some people won't answer. Some people will. Yeah. Cause I've run into that know. thing where people. And, were, and usually the same people that don't, the people that are going to answer anyway, they're going to answer the phone. Right. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like you're going to still get the same. If you don't matter if you call from Swahili. Very true. Hey guys, we've been on here for 39 minutes. Let's wrap this thing up. Um, I want to thank everybody for getting on here. Thank all the leaders that are on here and, and everybody coming together um, to hopefully make all you guys a whole lot better. Um, so I guess we'll see you guys next Thursday, 12 o'clock high noon. Um, anybody else got anything to say? It's a wrap. Um, Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all. See y'all next week.